Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching us, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. As always, you can find us on the podcast app, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. SoundCloud. I can enunciate. Sound. <laughs> Cloud. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. And our <laughs> social media links, all that good business is down below us on YouTube and around everywhere else. Yep. Get in contact if you'd like. You also, us the thing. check out our website. Uh, we've been posting back on there again. It was We sort of started it and then let it go by the wayside for a little while, but now we're posting back there again. Uh, we do our card spotlights on there and all that sort of thing. We also release one-off articles every once in a while so i realized on instagram where you can most normally find us uh i messaged a guy he messaged us about advice for a commander deck oh yeah, yeah i told yeah. him i'd think about it and you didn't get back to him hey buddy if you if you have listen or watch i'm gonna do that today are you yes and i'm okay. sorry it took me so long <laughs> whoops my bad i even have a few notes jotted down for it so we'll well, we'll get that in a second. Anywho, yes. Um, all right. Never mind. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So today's schedule. Uh, we're going to start off, as always, with our card of the day, our random card of the day. Um, our big topic today is going to be modern. Uh, we're going to look at the ban list. Yes. There's potential a, unbannings, things like that. A specific reason we're looking yes, at this list. I'll which talk about it. Will has done most of the effort on uh, writing the, today's episode, so you'll be taking the yeah. lead on that. I maybe got a little triggered perusing through YouTube. Yeah. Sounded like when you texted me about it, he texted me the other day and was like, yeah. I know what our show topic is. I was yeah, like, I okay. Know. Sure, go for it. Kevin, I was so. already writing at that point. Oh, I'm sure you were. <laughs> it was it was funky. <laughs> All right. um, but I also want to mention, we do want to talk about our stream as well, which we did mm. this past weekend. Loads uh, of fun. With two very special guests that, that we will talk time. about. Our question of the week, and then, of course, our sponsor and our cracker packs. So, yeah. kicking us off, though, we do have a random card of the day. So, let's get right into it in three, two, one. Oh, hey. Spy Network. Like this was this actually card. listed as one of the responses to our question on the week nice. of the week. Um, do you want to? Sure, sure, sure. Look at target player's hand, the top card of that player's library, and any face-down creatures he or she controls. Look at the top four cards of your library, then put them back in any order. Uh, so this is sweet. Um, all this card really equates to is information and answers. Uh, you get to find out what their game plan is the next turn before they know what they're doing mm -hmm. and then adjust your next four draws accordingly um this doesn't work against obviously mill deck um <laughs> very well however uh when this was printed this was when morph first came about i think mm -hmm. this is uh onslaught. onslaught yeah so morph if you don't know you put a card face down it becomes a 2-2 two -two. you can flip it up anytime x happens or at any time really yeah um and then something would usually happen Spy Network gets around its flip effect, and you just get to see what it is. Yep. So if you think it's a big, scary bomb, you can try to deal with it before that happens. Um, if they are about to draw something crazy and you're holding a counter, you can wait for it. it. This is just a great card. At one mana, it gets you so much. Yeah, and it is worth noting, too, it is at instant speed. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get to use it basically at any point in the game that you would like and when it's most advantageous right. for you to do so. Um, we've talked about this before, that Magic is an information game. Yep. This is purely an information-based card. And for that reason, it's really good. Yeah, it's solid. Um, Sufficient instant speed, and it gives you that info. So, yeah, no, I love it. Nothing bad to say about Spy Network. Um, no. New players are scared of it. It doesn't actually get you any new cards or anything like that. Not card advantage. No, but in a in a way, it's, it's information yeah. advantage, but it's not card advantage. Right. It's not like you're drawing a card. You're not even replacing it. So technically, mm -hmm. you're going to be down a card, but yeah. because you know then what you need to plan for, it sort of gives you a, a, a game plan for the next few yeah. turns, we'll say. Right. Um. So yeah, I really like it. Yeah, it's uh, good really card of the week. Nothing or card bad of the to day. Say. Yeah. If yeah. it was anything more than one mana, it <laughs> be terrible. I, yeah, I don't think it'd be I good. I think. Um. But yeah, for the fact that it's it's so efficient. Yeah. Because you want to okay play it. it and have answers immediately if you need yeah, them. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I like I it. I like it. Yeah. Solid spine. Good with that. Good card. Um. <laughs> so, do you want to do stream highlights first, or do you want to yes. do? Let's okay. Talk let's about talk about first, stream highlights because that's fairly brief. Um. So if you did not catch it at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We always do it late. I'm yeah, sorry. we always do it late because work schedules, things like that. Um, we did a two-headed giant, sort of just casual game. It was a lot of aggro stuff for the most part. It was, honestly. Um, but we had two very special guests. One of our good friends, Zach, who 
lives in DC, but was visiting for the weekend. Yeah. Uh, got to come down. He does not play Magic at all, really. No. Has played, but does not play. Because of me. Um, <laughs> Weird. Weird how that works. Um, but he was in town, oh. and he agreed he would like to stream with us. So mm-hmm. we thought, perfect, we'll do a three-player stream. However, we oh. also got another last-minute addition in the way of my lovely girlfriend, Monica, who sitting right over there. Um, <laughs> but she decided last minute to join us. Uh, she also doesn't play Magic again because right. of me. <laughs> Funny how that works. Um, but Sensing a theme. There is a theme. I'm not fun to play Magic with. Uh, it's just the as decks, it turns out. If you played like a, if I played normal decks, yeah, but man. I don't want to do that. So I know. Um, yes, she agreed to play, and so it ended up being Monica and I versus Will and Zach. Uh, ooh, ooh. which ended up being pretty good games. They were fun. They man. were really fun games. They were great. Um, decks we were playing, I was playing a Selesnia good stuff mm-hmm. deck, just green, white, good stuff. Yep. Monica was playing a blue, black sort of tempo strategy with a lot of defensive creatures, things yep. like that. Yep, what yep. were you and Zach playing? Uh, Zach was playing what he nicknamed the Angry Santa. It which was, is so perfect. It's so funny. <laughs> it was a green, red, like, blood braid aggro Cascade thing. Yeah, just basically play cascade stuff and uh uh oh man gives me free mana help me out burning tree thank you burning tree emissary into more (laughs) free things so he gave himself gifts and then attack you it It was was, really sweet it's such a fun deck that Um, deck we've used before and we've actually talked about before it was uh, tweaked this time a little bit it was a little bit i would say better vexing devil and things like vexing devil helps in it originally Eidolon didn't need to be in there. Eidolon okay. didn't need to be in there, okay. I was playing a blue-red Delver deck. Yes. And my partner had Eidolon. That's fair. Which is terrible. Yeah, it didn't really go well. Although, no. to be fair, he never actually played Eidolon. I don't know that he ever and, saw an Oh, Eidolon. he did. He was oh, he holding did. it for two games. Oh, okay. Because I said, don't play that, I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but we'll, yes, we'll so... Die. Basically, the games were actually really close. The first game, I know Monica and I got down to a very low life total. They were of like four. Oh, yeah. They were close. Six or times. four. It was um, great. Thankfully, we were able to stabilize in that first mm-hmm. game and come home with the win by just overpowering on the board. Yeah. Um, second game, you guys took it, which was a little more decisive, I believe. Quickly, yeah. Fairly I quickly, so. you guys were able to, to, to win that one. Right. And then on game three, it was similar to the first game in that we got down to a very low life total. But then we're able yeah. to pull it out. Um, so it was we just sort ra- of exactly what you'd expect. Yeah, we kind of uh, we both just kind of ran out of gas. And, yeah, I mean it happens. You know. yeah. but it was a lot was of fun. fun. Uh, really enjoyed the games. There was it was a much more casual feel than say our commander stream that I ruined played like a competitive um, deck. <laughs> so yeah, I guess the format was technically legacy, but really it was just casual. Yeah, I mean, there was it wasn't. No, it weren't tweet. I didn't have misstep, so it wasn't no. like legacy legacy no but. no and we didn't have actual dual lands or anything no because few shock lands i mean yeah but those Some are great pitches. i like those better anyway what they're not better i like no. them better because they're not 120 dollars yeah they're like 10 <laughs> uh, say if i'm gonna pay for four lands i don't want to pay 480 <laughs> for freaking you know what i'm that saying that is fair i will concede that you know that's why i like them better. yeah because yeah, everyone can get these yeah that makes sense um okay anyway so fun very stream. fun stream yep. thank you to monica and zach for playing uh i believe there's potential uh we're gonna try and stream this coming weekend on saturday yep. probably around the same time mm-hmm. i assume you'll know well i was gonna say you'll know by the time this episode's up yeah hmm. yeah um <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying we'll have posted probably by then if, yeah if it's possible or not breaking but. the fourth wall we record on sunday these released on wednesday my so. timeline's all over the place yeah oh, I'm um, sorry. but yeah so anyway the we will have an official time up at yep. some point it will probably be up by the time this episode's up so yeah yeah but yeah so stay tuned for that but without further ado i guess we'll get into our main topic which will you take the lead on fantastic so boys and girls gather around for stories of modern past <laughs> i was perusing the youtube last week YouTube. i found another magic youtuber by the name of ryu specter oh wow I'm you're gonna, calling him out i'm gonna throw a little wow. shade i'm throwing a little oh, shade okay. i wanted to preface before we started recording telling you i was gonna throw a little shade and then i decided ask forgiveness not permission <laughs> i'm not actually gonna be like super mean to him no, no um of course not. however he uh he's got 100 episodes 
congrats. That's awesome, yeah, dude. Yeah, good for him. Um, and he commemorated this with an updated top five list of cards that should be unbanned in modern. I'm a few months late in finding this. It was like September, I think, when he made this video. Sure. But it still applies. Be that as it may, yeah. this list is still something he he distributed for free. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about it. Um, in oh. his list, I'm going to quickly go through the top five cards that should be unbanned, according to Ryu Spectre: Bloodbraid Elf, Stoneforge Mystic, <laughs> sorry, Birthing Pod, Dig Through Time, mm. and Preordain. Preordain switched from Mental Misstep, which is the first. His first list, his first video, Mental Misstep should have been unbanned. Um, so we <laughs> are going to talk about why, why he's wrong. <laughs> yes. Sorry. What, exactly that, why he's wrong. Yeah. Um, it opens up an interesting topic. We, I think we wrote a little bit about ban hammers. We have right? talked about bannings, especially mm-hmm. in modern, I think specifically we've talked yeah. about them. Um, we also talked a lot about standard. But yeah. we've talked about modern bannings before, and I, the big argument that we had was should Jace or Ponder yeah, be that, unbanned. It's a whole episode, um, um, and a really fun one to make. It was um, fun. We sort of took the debate route on it, yeah. where it was like, okay, you take one card, I'll mm-hmm. take the other. And I think we were both in agreement on the cards that we chose. Yeah. So it was like, it worked out. We actually won wanted mm-hmm. to defend those sides and we sort of debated it out yeah. um it was sort of framed in the way of which is more powerful though or which would impact if it yeah, was, yeah 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 which was which is worse for unmanned. modern basically, yeah exactly is what, is what we said um uh, all of these <laughs> except for one except and we'll for talk one, about that, yeah. but most of these are all pretty bad for modern <laughs> um so we're gonna talk about why uh we're gonna break into one of my favorite cards first blood braid elf um yeah. talk about uh what it is why it was banned <laughs> Blood Red Elf is for four, a 3-2 with haste, mm-hmm. and cascade. Nothing crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> we should probably explain very quickly, for anybody that doesn't know what cascade is. Sure, sure. Uh, cascade is a mechanic that states after you have cast this card and it enters the battlefield, <clears throat> you get to look, reveal cards from the top of your deck until yeah. you reveal a card with a lower converted mana cost, and you get to play it mm-hmm. without paying that mana cost. True. So for Blood Braid, the ma- it's it's converted mana cost is four, so anything three or less you get to play. For free. For free. Cool. That's a great card. That's it's fantastic. a fantastic card. Um hence it's banned. <laughs> yeah. Well <laughs> Sorry. It's, again, I hold... I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. So Blood Braid isn't banned because of Blood Braid. It's banned because the deck it was played in, it is a four of <laughs> include automatically. Yeah. And it hits the rest of the deck. <laughs> so quickly, I'm gonna go over some cards that Blood Braid hits. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Dark Confidant, mm. Goyf, Any Lily, Inquisition of Cosalect, Bolt, mm. Fatal Push, Thought Seize, Abrupt Decay, Terminate, mm-hmm. Death Shadow. Uh, Death Rite Shaman's banned, but for a while it was not, so that's on the list too. But it's banned now, so it doesn't count. Maelstrom Pulse, Lightning, <laughs> Punishing Fire, <laughs> Sprouting Thrynax. Sprouting Thrynax is the weakest on that list. Mm-hmm. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3 that when it dies, you create 3 one ones, which isn't bad. That's pre- if you get it for free. That's pretty good board presence. It's very good board presence. Um, it doesn't go in over any of this stuff, but just saying. That's, and Classic Jund. That, is the, that was like an include. It's the worst card on this list. Yeah. Lightning. For free. <laughs> Lightning deals two damage. You discard Isn't it three. That's right. Sorry. Lightning deals three damage to a player and they discard yeah. two cards. That's stupid good. So, so I played my haste three two. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, you go ahead and take three before combat. Yeah. And you are gonna need to discard two cards. Mm-hmm. So by that the seems way, fair. you can counter Blood Bright Elf. Cascade still happens. Cascade it's when you cast. Yeah. So yeah, um the Jun lists that were playing Blood Rip. Blood Braid Elf designed them to work around Blood Braid. It was the top of their curve. They mm-hmm. could literally, Blood Braid is a 3 2 with haste, free 3 damage that represents so much value. Yep. So, Jund at this time was sweeping modern by storm. Uh, there were five GPs the month before Blood Braid got banned. Jund won two of them outright, got second place in a third, uh, top four in another one, and then in the fifth, was in the top eight six times. Six? Six. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, the final <laughs> the final match was a Jund meter. Perfect. 
Does this sound a little familiar? Does this sound like Aetherworks in his bit. previous standard? A little bit. So, yeah, Jund was everywhere and dominating. Yeah. People just didn't seem to have an answer. Jund is the perfect tempo mid-range deck mm -hmm. in that it gets to its mid-game so quickly because its mid-game is so cheap compared to other yeah. mid-range decks. And at the mid-game, they represent so much of a scary board. Yeah. You can build Jund in a number of different ways. There's that, I play a bunch of free stuff, get a really big board presence and swing out at you or i'm i'm slower i have a lot of burn i have hand destruction mm -hmm. i blood braid goif to keep you um to put stuff in your graveyard get goif bigger swing blah blah, blah. uh when death right was in it was just an unstoppable monster uh blood yeah. braid got banned before death right shaman um however <laughs> we they realized that john still needed a little bit of toning down so death yeah. right was gone as well uh Death Rite was also just way too good in other stuff. It's just a, yeah. way too good for modern. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, that's it's, unrelated. <laughs> John's, John's ability to completely control the game, mm -hmm. the game's speed, its tempo is unprecedented, really. There's yeah. never been a deck that does it better, in my opinion, in modern. Um, you can maybe argue Birthing Pod does a good job, but I think John was better than Birthing Pod, even though... I think it was more consistent than Birthing Pod. John had a bad matchup against Birthing Pod, but yeah. John won more consistently than yeah, Pod. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get into that in a moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, Blood Braid was banned again, to reiterate, because John was too good. Yeah. And it's it's good without Blood Braid. Well, yeah, you still have the Thought Seas, the Inquisitions, the Abrupt Decays, Dark Confidant. You still have all the good stuff. It's kind it's of just not it's too more, good anymore. Yeah, it's more niche now. It's yeah. more focused in the slower hand destruction, sure. out value kind of route yeah. um, that it falls into. Uh, anything you want to say about Blood Braid? It's too on? good. That's yeah. all. It's just way too good for modern. Yeah, it's, it's simply. I 100% disagree that it should be. Far too strong. Uh, some no reasons, reasons he says. Uh, it should be unbanned. I wanted to go over this a little bit. Um, that there are better creatures. Again, that is true. Vanilla Blood Braid is just a 3-2 with haste. That's not that great. Yeah. However, Blood Braid represents way more value than you're giving it credit for. It's not. Buddy. You don't just get Blood Braid with it. No. You say it will never get you a card that... It will sometimes get you a card that you want, but far more often gets you a card you don't want. However, you can make a deck that there's no card you don't want. I was going to say, no when you deck you don't build... Want. Yeah, that's not the case. Sorry. Right. If if this was limited, Blood Braid's fine limited. Sure, it might get you a card that you don't... It's, right. You it can comes down to the deck building aspect exactly. because you build around Blood Braid, but exactly. when you're in a limited environment, you have such a limited number of cards mm -hmm. that you can include in your deck that yeah. in that mm -hmm. instance, yeah, you're not always going to hit what you want. Right. Um, you hopefully will hit something, but it's not going mean, to necessarily... You, yeah, be, you will hit something. Yeah. However, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I just disagree. Yeah, entirely. I disagree on all on all fronts. I do not foresee a time when Blood Braid should be unbanned. No. Um. So it's also say. not even the case where there's more removal for it now because mm -hmm. there's it's not like Fatal Push hits it. Not really. Like you no. have to do something to enable Fatal Push to hit it, and it's like right. okay, you never expect to do that. Bolt, um, I mean, Bolt hits it. Bolt hits it, Dismember but it hit it before. It. Push, right. Dismember hit it before. Like, all of the same removal spells that hit Blood Braid are the, really the only mm -hmm. really effective ones. I mean, I get that you can Fatal Push it, but it's right. not likely that you're going to. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, I just, no. <laughs> no, that's too good. Um, the We're going to skip number two for a little bit, and I'll we'll talk about it later. So we're going to yeah. go right into Birthing Pod. Uh, yeah, Birthing Pod... <laughs> Birthing Pod was great, and there were really only two Birthing Pod decks that really made an impact. Uh, there was Malira Pod, yeah. and then Naya or Kiki Pod, or Four Color Pod, yeah. or what have you. Um, the last, Those last three are kind of the same deck, just mix and match. Uh, Malira Pod works a lot like Counter's Company. Yeah, that, it's a very similar deck. You use Malira um, to uh, put Negwon, Negwon Counters on things give benefits from the Negwon Negwon counters and such, sack well, things and... Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. it basically disables Persist. It yeah. Not disables it as in like, it does. It makes it so you can persist infinitely because yes. your creatures yeah, don't yeah, get yeah, negative, yeah. negative one counters. So yes. the win was basically a sack outlet, Malira, this, as an example, there were plenty yeah. of wins, but sack outlet, Malira, and like murderous red cap which yep. is like a, a four cost two two that when it dies it it shocks something mm -hmm. 
And so you can just infinitely shock somebody. Yeah. You can which, just sack sack it to birthing pod. Yeah. Um or excuse me, this receiver. Yeah. Again and again and again and again. Get it out with kitchen finks. On turn like three. It's it's the yeah, it's busted. The the combo deck of all combo decks is what it really amounts to. Because yeah. it's like well, you get the yeah. kitchen finks thing, infinite life. You get the burger thread cap, infinite mm-hmm. damage. Like there's so many ways. And counter company now, what it is now is sort of, an, it feels to me sort of like a knockoff version. And that it's still is. good. It's I mean, great. it's not a bad. It. It's not a bad deck. I just mean that it's like the new version of that. You oh, know absolutely, what I mean? absolutely. That's very much less consistent. The same pieces are in there. Same pieces. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, and it is less consistent. Birthing which pod, which is why it's okay that it's in right. modern right now. Birthing pod made it consistent, and that's yeah. why birthing pod needed to go. Was that it? You got to this combo so much and yeah. so often, almost every game you played, really, unless you were dead. Yep. Uh, the second version, Kiki Pod. Uh, <laughs> this one is just Splinter Twin <laughs> with Pod. Yeah, Splinter Twin, but Pod finds you your pieces. So <laughs> you use Kiki Jiki, either Zealous Conscripts, Restoration Angel, or Deceiver X Arc, and you just made a bunch of things. <laughs> they all got haste, and you swung. Yeah, and that's it. Um. On top of this, you got a bunch of toolbox creatures that if you needed, I don't know, say... Um, a Rex Sage, yeah, uh, just as Recla- an example. No, that's exactly what I was thinking. Reclamation Sage, you need to blow up an artifact. There you go. Yep. It's gone. Just pull it out with pod. Yep. Siege Rhino to represent some board presence, get some lights. Sure. The toolbox deck of all toolbox decks. Yes. <laughs> um, so these two decks are really good. This isn't uncommon for modern. Why did it get banned? Um consistency is its big problem it yep. reduced the amount of mid-range decks to really just these yeah these were the premier mid-range tempo decks um and they were really the only ones that got played so to make a healthier format at the time for the mid-range kind of style they had to ban pot mm-hmm. um which made sense uh and it wasn't that it was just a kind of good mid-range deck that was only played as a mid-range or the only mid-range deck played it was a fantastic deck that won a lot. Yeah. That was the only mid-range deck that got played. Yeah. Um, again, it competed with Jun, <laughs> but Jun was its own other problem. Yes. As its own, like, aggro tempo deck. Yeah. That got played. Um, so you might be sensing a theme here. We'll touch on that at the end. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Yes. Um, amount of the field is important. and we'll <clears throat> Yeah, percentage yeah. is important. We'll talk about that in a bit. So the yeah. next card... If I'm not mistaken, we're gonna do. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh, dig, dig. through time. Yeah. yeah, dig through time and treasure cruise. Oh, oh, buddy, <laughs> buddy, buddy. I buddy. can't believe he put dig through time on this list. And <laughs> effectively, dig through time and treasure cruise. The reason we're bunching these together is because they're very similar. They cards. are, yeah, very similar. Um, um dig and- dig through time is the uh, look through the seven cards, look yeah. through the top seven cards of your deck, take two of them, put the rest on the bottom. For two blue and like six generic, yep. but six it has generic. delve. Right. Treasure Cruise in the same vein is draw three <laughs> cards for seven generic and a blue. But also delve. has delve. And they're in- both of them are instant speed, is that correct? Uh, no, Treasure Cruise is actually sorcery. Is it? Yep. Okay. Dig Through Time, though, is instant speed. Yeah. <laughs> Seems fair, right? It's rare for a reason. Well, um, yeah. Because in standard, it was busted. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so when these were in the format, um, there was a deck that's near and dear to my heart, Delver. A. <laughs> Once these hit modern, they had an 80% win rate. 80%? An 80% win that rate. Is insane. I'm going to say that for the people in the back. An 80% win rate. Just to clarify, like decks, generally you want to stick around the 50% win rate. Yeah, that's perfect. That's where you, that's, that's the great. prime perfect number. If you're a little above, that means you're in the good, you're, you're feeling pretty good. If you're a little mm-hmm. below, it means you're probably not mm-hmm. tier one. You're in that tier two range. To give you a better example, pros percentage win rates in like all of their mm-hmm. tournaments ever are generally around 60%. Yeah. So like every percent above that matters so much more than you would give it credit for on the yeah. face of it. So 80% of wins for a deck is insane. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Um, that's a that's a miracle batting average. Uh <laughs> but yeah no 80 percent is 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 insanely high yeah and it wasn't even only delver decks that played this but this is just an example so why did these decks get so much good so much better so much good why they get so much good with just this one card i don't know billy why <laughs> i'll tell you cletus 
Uh, Where's Sherlock? <laughs> 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 oh man get the spoons <laughs> oh we had a call back to a to a latter episode bud yeah um, check out sherlob sherlob that was great okay <laughs> sorry so with this much card advantage we'll talk about dig through time first actually so looking at the top seven cards of your deck uh you get to s- you get to see the next seven turns yeah um and take the two best ones and pitch all the other ones that you don't want wow that's solid um, blatant draw two is strong even on its own. I mean, yeah, I've never met a divination I didn't like to quote LSV. <laughs> um, but to be able to do it at instant speed for two is yeah. insane. What this effectively let Delver decks do and other decks that run this is if they were out of fuel, Delver specifically, they were an aggressive deck. They have a lot of answers. If they're out of fuel, they don't have their answers or their efficient spells. They could refuel so easily with these cards. Cruise was honestly, in my opinion, better for the Delver deck because you just yeah. you drew three. It was effectively an Ancestral Recall. Right. Um, which, Ancestral Recall uh, was banned while these weren't. These two got banned and Ancestral You're came back. Ancest- Ancestral Visions. I am. Which is sort Visions. of similar. Right. It is, but it's been. <laughs> You're right. Yes. Um, but no, it is. It effectively was an Ancestral Recall if you could delve enough cards away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so effectively... Whenever you're playing against a deck that has Dig or Cruise in it, your removal becomes so much worse unless it's Path. Mm -hmm. Because your counters, your kill spells, these are all fueling their future card advantage. You're fueling their refuel, basically. Yeah. So they could play out their hand, get the board up, start answering the things, and then refuel and have more answers for things, which is monstrous. Yeah. Um, These decks got so solid. And we see cards that are cheaper and way more efficient already not in the format. Yeah. Preordain, ponder, brainstorm, all these things never touch modern for that reason it's, alone. Yeah, that's the exact reason. It just makes things work too consistently. And consistency is really the key to mm-hmm. a good deck, right? Like if you have a consistent Absolutely. deck that can <laughs> consistently get to its win and things like that, that's mm-hmm. where you're going to see it as a tier one, something really, really good. Mm-hmm. If it's too consistent, <laughs> that's when you get the band hammer on it because yeah. it just becomes too good. It right. If you're winning... 80% of your games, you're going to get banned. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's that's just the, how it goes. So, the thing. Yeah. Um, they got to keep it competitive, and this makes these decks far too strong. Yeah. Um, yeah, essentially, the decks that ran it, especially Delver, got to trade less powerful answers at any point in the game just because they pretty much had them all the time. Mm-hmm. Cards like this help them a lot. So, yeah, Dig and Cruise, no thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Do not no. want any, no way. Anything you want to add there? No, I mean, That's that the- sort of covers all of the cantrip stuff yeah. in general, like as a mm-hmm. sort of umbrella term for it, because it's the same story with Preordain and things like that, mm-hmm. Ponder. That's it's, it's just too good at making a deck consistent. That's why Git Probe got banned, because yeah. it made way too many decks too consistent. Yeah, rip Probe. Yeah, probe. I'm still mad. It's It stinks because Probe isn't that strong on its own, but like Bloodbraid Elf and the yeah. right deck, it is an engine. Lantern Control loved it. Lots of lots of decks did. Yeah. Um, any combo deck, really. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because any deck, no matter what color you were playing, could play it too. I'm which glad. Made it interesting. I'm glad you mentioned that. Let's roll to number. What a five. great segue. That <laughs> wasn't de- planned either. No. <laughs> any deck can play it. Mental misstep comes to mind. No, a little bit. Mental misstep never touched modern, not even <laughs> once. Mental misstep. Fun fact of the day is the most played blue card in Legacy. Did you know that? Uh, I'm not surprised by that, to yeah. be honest. Um, I didn't know that. Though. What happened when it got printed was uh, a lot of blue decks cropped up <laughs> in Weird. Legacy. Yep, just, you know, because uh, <laughs> blue became very, very strong. Why did blue become so strong? <laughs> because you essentially had a free answer all the time. Uh, cards like Mental Misstep, uh, Force of Will... Um, days things like this help you answer combo <laughs> decks aggro decks so efficiently um mental misstep especially helps you answer aggro decks so whenever you have mental misstep in a format tempo decks combo decks and can or excuse me it leverages tempo combo and control decks so much against aggro and beatdown decks mm-hmm. you, you can't what's the word you can't shirk how much like it helps them. <laughs> Imagine a red deck wins that doesn't resolve a creature until turn three. 
If yeah. you're holding two missteps, for instance, they do not get their first goblin guide or their swift spear or what have you. Legion battalion, whatever guy. Doesn't doesn't matter <laughs> what it is. Their one drop they don't get. Yeah. Which is mean. So decks that this hits, zoo, red deck wins, uh Jund in some instances. Death Shadow. Death Shadow. All of these decks don't get to play their yeah. super strong cards. Which is really mean. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that the control decks get so much stronger. Any deck can Any get deck stronger. can run that. Yeah. It becomes... If you don't know, yeah, I don't know if we actually stated what mental misstep was, just sure. in case. In case you didn't know, it's uh, one mana or two life. It's the Phyrexian mana mm -hmm. for an instant that says counter target spell that costs mm -hmm. one. Yep. So it's effectively a one mana or free answer to every other one mana spell in the game. In existence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for two life. <laughs> That's good. Seems pretty good. Trust me. Uh, it's just insane. <laughs> yeah, it's very solid. Um, yes, and anyone runs it, it becomes an instant sideboard card in every deck. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just no way around it. Everyone would get to stop Zoo pretty much all the time. Yep. They never resolve their Curd Apes. Death Shadow is far gone. It's just mean. Um, the 18 of the top 50 most played cards in Modern are one drops. If you're a math buff, you'll know that's 36%. And that's not the majority, but that's a good portion. Yeah. Also, it allows you, since it goes in every deck, to protect your uh, Death Shadows way too easily. Yeah. Um, because Grixis Death Shadow is still a premier deck, nothing's been banned out of that, you're able to hold up Misstep and counter their push, their um, Zap, get a land. Path. Thank you. <laughs> uh, their Bolt, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you've just got this free this free thing that you don't need to represent with any mana but if you wanted to it's only one mana there you go yeah um it's just far too strong it's slowing down many many decks in the format and that's a, the at the big picture level that's what it's doing it's slowing down the format which makes any of the aggro decks like we've already mentioned mm -hmm. just so much worse because yeah. they're not gonna they're not gonna get the win that they want no it puts them back <laughs> at least a turn probably two and that mm -hmm. is back breaking for a red deck wins or yeah. a zoo deck or something like that it just doesn't work yeah think about if you're a red deck wins deck and you don't get to go first yeah. even how does that feel yeah it, it almost feels like you're three turns back if you don't a little bit if yeah, you yeah. if you if you get to go second and then you get mental misstep that just stinks that feels so bad doesn't it yeah gosh like imagine i'm playing grix's death shadow turn one thought sees take your thing <laughs> you try to resolve your goblin guide. Mental misstep. <laughs> now I'm down to four cards in hand on turn Probably my turn two. Three. No, four. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Hey. I was counting land, I was like, no, you already did. Yeah. It's uh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> that's that's just crazy. Yeah. Uh, right. Anyway, so <laughs> misstep is just automatically Too good. however, an argument for misstep. It never got played in modern. So we don't really get to see what it would do. This is just speculation, right? I, it's pretty it's solid. Pretty speculation. accurate speculation. You can then. look at a format back and see what yeah, it's doing. I mean, just look at done. Legacy. Exactly. That's all. Uh, most played card in Legacy. Yeah. It's just think about that. Okay. So I talked about a theme. Kevin. Yeah. You want to hit on the theme? I blanked. I don't. So the thing about this is all of these cards that we've talked about that we would not want unbanned no. really hurt uh, the variety of decks that you would find. Yes. And so what modern right now is actually in a fairly healthy place and that if you look at the previous few top eights for modern tournaments, you see a lot of variety of deck lists. It's not the same decks winning repeatedly. There's an argument to be made that a few months ago, Death Shadow was definitely at the top, which I think I would agree it was definitely at the top Mm -hmm. But uh, there are counters for that, and people are realizing that. You know, Chalice for one, well, that just shuts off most of your deck at that point. So, like, there are plenty of answers, and right now we're seeing all of those being played as a culmination of decks. We're seeing Ad Nauseam at the top occasionally. We've seen Eight Rack at the top at one point. We're seeing yeah. a variety of decks, um, all of which are good, all of which are competitive. Puts us in a healthy place. Yes, there's a lot of variety. If... We were to unban, say, Bloodbraid Elf, just as an example. Mm. Jund would suddenly, speculation, but I think we can 
kind of prove uh, that Jund would sort yeah. of step up to the forefront and I become would, the deck. I'd it, bet my prized stallion. <laughs> <laughs> All of my horses. And it's the same with things like uh, Preordain or anything like that. We would 100% see Delver decks coming up. Uh, yeah. If if we saw Birthing Pod come back, Birthing Pod decks would become... We would no longer see Counter Company because it would just be Birthing Pod. Yeah. Like, it's just a better version. And so the variety of decks... Ideally, in a format, needs to be a fairly wide variety, and Absolutely. we're in that stage right now. I really enjoy where we're at with Modern. Mm -hmm. Unbanning any of these, I believe, would definitely nerf that. Right. Um, another reason that they ban things in Modern or don't let things hit Modern is because they want to keep combo exactly where it's at in Modern. Yes. Consistently at a turn four, turn three to five. Three to five. That's where they want to keep combo. When yeah. you see Legacy and Vintage at turn one and two... They want to avoid that as much as they can. Yeah. Some of these cards help with that. They don't absolutely turn that on, um, but they give combo decks so much fuel. They give the edge to combo. Yeah. Especially, I mean, we dig through time, treasure cruise, misstep. Yeah. Cards like that, especially. And, of course, the cantrips. Um, however, we bagged on your list a lot there, right, you Spectre? But there was one There's card. There's one card that, you... that we agree with. Yes. So, uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Yes. I think that it is probably... Everybody shudders. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Relax. Calm down. Those of you who remember Cobblade. <laughs> relax. Um, here's my argument for unbanning Snowden Forge Mystic. Yep. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 that fetches artifacts. Um, however, when I was thinking about Stone Forge Mystic, and I think episode the last, I thought you pay 2 and equip an artifact. Not so. It just hits the field, mm -hmm. which is still great. You still play it for, oh, yeah. for free, sort of. But Batter Skull for two seems pretty good. There's that. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you still you play it for free, <laughs> but you don't equip it for free. So it's not as fast as I thought Right. initially. Uh, I just had forgotten Stoneforge because I never play Stoneforge because it's dirty. Um, <laughs> however, there are so much that answer Stoneforge now. Yeah. Bolt Steel deals three damage. That's great. Yeah. Path. That's great. Fatal push. I mean, hey. electric deals one damage, buddy. Is it two one? It is a two two. No way. I thought it was a two one. Kevin, am I wrong? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've been living a lie. I'm gonna look this up. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. It's two two. Why did I think it was that? Maybe you're right. I don't know. I don't think Why it's did a two, I think two. it's a two one? I don't know. Am I wrong? We're doing it live. We're doing it live, guys. I'm so sorry. No way. Click on any interface. I'm trying. Or is it a one two? It's a one two. Ah, okay. My fault. We were both wrong. We're both wrong. Look Makes at that. We bad. suck. Ah. You could shock it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, all that to oh, say, that was bad. There are plenty of answers. Yes, yes, you get to tutor stuff. Now, again, the scariest thing about this is batter skull. Yeah. It's a turn really three batter skull. Mm -hmm. Uh, a four four with lifelink and vigilance on turn three. <laughs> um, however, remember, you can still path it. You can destroy artifacts. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can do to that. It's not perfect. Um, the, the fact of the matter remains, a threat on board is not that strong in an environment with so much removal. Yeah. I know that goes kind of counterintuitive to our points about Jund and such, but that at the end of the day, that's the peak of this combo is Batter Skull. Yeah. You can put a sword on stuff. But again, that's really slow. Because and artifact removal is at a fairly high rate at the moment, solely because... Uh, for sideboards. For, for sideboards, sideboards, artifact hate is, like, it's always going to be there. You're always going to have something. You need stuff for Chalice, <laughs> for uh, Lantern Control. <clears throat> you don't need it for aid rack. No one really plays. Well, some people do. But anyway, I'm getting <laughs> nitpicky. Yeah. Um, however, there are plenty of answers to this deck. Now, the fear for people and what happened was a version of Cobblade from Standard made its way to Modern for a moment. Yeah. Without Jace, admittedly, but it was still pretty strong. This was an environment without Fatal Push, though. Exactly. An environment without... Um, uh, no, there was efficient uh, artifact removal for one. Mm. Was but, there? Mm -hmm. Okay. But this was before Siege Rhino. This was before um, uh, Loxodon Smiter. Mm -hmm. uh, this was before the boards got bigger, essentially. They printed better creatures, really. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, Death Shadow wasn't a premier deck at all. Uh, so this modern was drastically different. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing now is that white, tempo-y, weenie decks, they're not that great. Um, 
one I think snuck into the top eight kind of on a fluke. Uh, it's good against Death Shadow, and that's why because yeah. White Weenie because it was so good against Death Shadow, and at that time Death Shadow was the deck to beat. Yeah. Um, you had somebody who picked the right deck and got into the top eight. I mean, you know, yeah. and it's just a matter if he had a lot of Death Shadow matchups, and it worked out for there him. There you go. Um, yeah. So. Oh, I lost my train of thought, bro. Oh, the Cobbler people were afraid of. The Cobbler people were afraid <laughs> of was Jason the Mind Sculptor, uh, Stoneforge Mystic, Squadron Hawk, and then a bunch of swords. Yeah. Uh, Gta, by the way, is banned in Modern, so you yes. don't have to worry about Unizawas. Um, you will have to contend with Squadron Hawk and Squires and uh, the Doomed Travelers and targets for these swords and whatnot. But again, removal is so good. Now Electricery's played in Modern. Awesome. I, mean, I approve this message. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, it is because when you <laughs> when you put a bunch of one ones, yeah, you know, have them as your targets, then you're gonna want to win. Yep, absolutely. Dis- Dismember will great. hit everything because Batter Skull is the biggest that deck will be as a four four. Yeah, Dismember kills it. Yep, that's awesome. This deck has so many answers that I feel as though Stoneforge isn't that bad. However, what you cannot get is unbanning Stoneforge Mystic and Jace. Yes. Pick one, but not both. We argued in the past yeah. to unban Jace, yes? Yes, I think we both, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. agreed that Jace, while a very powerful card, would mm-hmm. not be as impactful, I think, as the general population would believe it is. Right. Um, so, so. W- what happens is, if you unban one, you help out uh, one style of deck. Mm-hmm. You either help out the little weenie tempo, or you help out like the mid-range control decks. Yeah. If you unban both, you make a new deck. You can protect your Cobblade combo yeah. so easily. You can find more Stoneforge, find more pieces way more easily with Jace, and that's, by the way, all you do with Jace is yeah. brainstorm for days. Um, it's back to consistency. Yes. It's back to the cantrips, back to the you cannot you cannot make a deck run that fluidly. Yeah. You have to let an element of randomness be in there. This is not Legacy. This is not vintage. There you go. <laughs> Nor do we want it to be. No, so you can't get both. So, Kevin, we talked about a bunch of cards that yeah. we want to see stayed banned. One card to unbanned. Mm-hmm. Can you think of any cards right now that should be banned? I know what cards you're thinking of. Well, I'm um, I'm mold this. I chewed on it a little bit. I've got my take on it yeah. is that there isn't a card that I feel like is dominating enough. Mm to require a ban at this point sure i think at one point a lot of people argued that death shadow could have been banned i think we've proven over time that you don't need to yeah um it's got enough answers i think the card that i know you're thinking of is collected company Company. um which is very very good in any green creature based deck counter Mm -hmm. company loves loves collected company i mean mean, that's that's what it's for right Elves would love it. I mean, there's so many decks that do get a huge buff out of Collected Company. That yes. being said, I think I don't think that it needs to be banned. Um, I'm going to agree at this point. However, I, it's like an agnostic agreement. <laughs> in the that, I don't know agreement. Yeah, in that given <laughs> enough, there is one data point that I want to look at really yeah, to yeah. see. I want to know, and maybe someone out there can give me the answer. I want to know the win rate of the decks that play Collected Company after they resolve Collected Company. Right. Not before or after. And I do think that would be an interesting metric to see. The Because the decks that run Collected Company not as a combo piece, but just as a I'm going to fill the board kind mm-hmm. of piece, they're decks like Elves, um, yeah, yeah. Bant Humans, uh, Green White Humans, stuff like that. Uh, and they get so much value on board and that you're able to get, say, uh, Ranger of Eos and uh, the guy that gets the 2CMC thing from theros uh from theros isn't that not theros are you talking recruiter dust watch no 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 recruiter of the guard because that's not in modern is that what you're talking about what set is that printed in conspiracy oh yeah shoot the thing that the reason i kind of don't care that much about collected company Mm. is because you know when somebody has collected company it's very obvious and here's what I'm gonna here's yeah. what I'm gonna say. If you're against a green deck and they have four mana open, it's one of two things. It's either a resto mm-hmm. angel or it's a collected company. Sure. You just know that it is. And so like if you are a blue deck, and I get this is a situational thing, but if you're a blue sure. deck, you know when they're gonna have that four mana. 
So it's really easy to just be prepared for the collected company. It can be. It can be. Yeah. I also think collected company, the variants of collected company, which you're you're gonna build the deck to hit creatures. Yeah. However, absolutely. there's always the possibility that you're just not gonna hit either the things you need or the things you want at that time. Or you could theoretically hit nothing, although I don't think Kevin, you can count on that. Kevin. This, I think there are This is the blood braid argument. Kevin. Uh, mm, it's you, a little different. No. I think there are a million answers also. It's, it's not. There's counters. That's the only There's thing. counters. There's creature removal, of which there's Here's, a ton. Right, but he, there's it's, sweepers. It's, it's not there's... the worry of building the board. It's the worry of building the advantage on the board when it hits the board. Your ETB effects. They get yeah, nuts. I mean, that's fair. They get nuts. I'm just saying, I don't think it's at a point where we need to ban it by any means. I watched, Kevin, a six-year-old girl mm -hmm. play in her Grand Prix. Was it Elves? It was Elves. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. She 2 owed her opponent. She played Collected Company in both games. Yeah. Twice. I believe it. I mean, you're going to up your win percentage for sure, but it's not unbeatable. I just want to know how much. It's not unbeatable. It's just very... Jund was not unbeatable. The Delver mm, decks at 80% <laughs> were not unbeatable. It wasn't unbeatable. It's pretty close. <laughs> Birthing Pod beat it a lot. Okay. Jund beat it. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying... Yeah, yeah. Collected Company does exactly what Modern hates. It helps yeah. combo decks consistently, and it hurts the variety of decks you see. Yeah. Right. I will concede that I think if there was going to be a card band, Collected Company would be at the top of the list. However, I don't think... I still would disagree that it needs it's to be in, It's in 16% uh, of the decks, by the way. Is it 16? Yeah. 16%. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, but it's not over it's, that threshold. No, 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 no. It's not what we dislike, but it's edging there. It's getting there, for sure. And given a few... Given a few more targets, I think, as mm -hmm. we print more and more better cards, which Wizards is doing for company, mm -hmm. uh, Ixalan just got buffed a lot, I think. Mm, yeah. You, I, I would say probably. Um, I mean, you pair it with Court of Calling. It's just really strong. I mean, That's it's very strong. I, I agree it's a very strong card. I don't think it's ban worthy. I don't know yet. I think it could be easily. It's on my watch list. That's fair. You know what I, mean? I think it's fair to have it on a watch you know list. You know what I'm saying? Um, is it's, there any? It's not allowed to buy a gun. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't pass the background check. No, no. it does not. Uh, are there any other modern bans or unbannings that you had in mind? I think that was it for me. Um, that's really the only card that I would want out. Yeah, I don't think there's um, anything else. And I, I'm still, I don't know that I do want it out. Yeah, I just know that's really good. It's really good. <clears throat> well, let's move on then. Okay. We'll wrap that up. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any opinions, by the way, on modern bannings mm -hmm. or unbannings, uh, let us know in the comments below. We will, I mean, we like to revisit sort of ban lists and things like mm -hmm. that occasionally. So yeah. this is going to be a reoccurring topic, I'm sure, at some point. Definitely. Um, so I do believe, you know, if you guys leave comments down below or anything like that, we will absolutely go over them in our next banning episode uh, whenever that happens to be. But mm -hmm. for now, we'll move on to the question of the week. We'll set which, that aside. Uh, this past week, the question was, what is the best one mana instant? I have um, my answer. I, okay, so in third place, we have, with two votes, only one card. And you, I told you before we started, yeah, you were I'd not going to guess, guess this. Uh, condemn. No. Um, is it uh, something obscure? Well, think obscure. It's just funny. That's it's all. Not, it's not a bad card. Like It's not electricery. Um, no. That'd be great. Somebody should have put Electricery. I don't know. What is it? Tragic Slip. It's just an obscure removal spell. That's all. People said because they just liked it. It's a great card. I mean, there's the nothing, on it nothing to funny. hate. Yeah. I mean, it's just funny. <laughs> Whoops, I'm dead. Yeah, exactly. I Somebody literally Slip. commented that. Um, in it's second funny. place, with three votes each, there are three spells. Path. Bolt. <laughs> Instant, huh? Brainstorm. Mm -hmm. Uh, incorrect. <laughs> um, on all three. On all three. All right. Uh, vampiric tutor. All right. It's good. Uh, dark ritual. No. No. Um, it works really well in a deck. Um, <laughs> ancestral recall. For some reason, got second. <laughs> I, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, it. It's kind of the. Yeah. 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 So yeah. at number one with 12 votes 
There's one card. What do you think? It's, I mean, it's, it's a fan favorite, let's be honest. Bolt. Yeah, it's Bolt. Cool. I don't think yeah. it's better than I mean, Recall, but sure. Uh, other cards that were noted, Fatal Push was on there, Swords to Plowshares, Mana Tithe, which I think is funny. Giant Growth? I don't think giant. It's classic. Kevin, do you wanna do you wanna on three say the best one mana instant? Yeah, one, one two, two, three. three mental unsummon. Mental misstep. <laughs> I, th- I thought we were being serious. <laughs> it's mental misstep. It's, it's mental misstep. Yeah, it's it's kind of great. Uh, it counters every other of those things always for yeah. the end of time. I mean, I would argue ancestral recall is probably the best, but I think mental missteps best or the second best i would say uh yeah it's really a, a question of philosophy at that point would yeah. you rather have more cards or ha- let them have not a thing nothing uh, that was a well-crafted sentence will i craft sentences goo. will you let them have not a thing not a thing Jeez. all right the new not a thing um all right so topics done ryu specter you're off the hook Yes, maybe. I hope you don't consider this. Not that you would ever necessarily watch this, oh, but I'm if gonna, you do, I am going to send it. Send to it him. to him. If you watch this, Buddy. this isn't us like ragging on you or anything. Congratulations on your 100 episodes. Boop, boop. We just thought we'd do a little response for it. That's all. Yeah, conversation should happen, and that's you know, why we're here. Talk to us. Um. So moving on to our crack and packs. These are of course sponsored by Grand Great Slam Slam. Comics and Collectibles. Uh, they're about 20 minutes south of Charlotte, so if you're in the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina region, come hang out. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and they have treated us very well, so uh, can't be too unhappy. We do have our goal cards, of course. Mine is Itlamok. What is yours? Uh, it is... Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's, Tiger. it's like, that's not it. <laughs> no. Fathom Fleet Captain is my rare, but Carnage Tyrant is my goal card. Um... So I didn't get mine either, by the way. I got repeated barrage, which I think is probably the pick. It's three damage that theoretically you can do over and over. Um, other really good cards at Zocan Archer. I think I said that somewhat correctly. Uh, Stormfleet Spy, and then not as the first pick, but Storm Sculptor is also quite good in the Merfolk deck. Yeah. So I would probably pick repeated barrage because removal. That's basically it. Uh, Fathom Fleet Captain is absolutely my pick. Yeah. A 2 1 for 2 with Menace. Whenever it attacks, if I control another pirate, I can pay 2 generic. If I do create a 2 2 black pirate creature token with Menace. Yes. I would like to fuel my board. <laughs> that sounds great. Sweet. Yeah. Um, cool. Also, just as a fun aside, Shorekeeper. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. <laughs> that's treasure. I can put it up on the screen. You that's know, Treasure Cruise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just fix it in post. <laughs> they put Treasure Cruise on a, on a zero three for one. Yeah. Uh, without Delve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Imagine um, how Delve makes the cards so good. Uh, um, yeah. All right. Well, guys, we want to thank you for sticking around for this episode. This one uh, was a bit different, I guess, in terms. Oh, we forgot to say what? next week's question of the week. We didn't say that. Oh, dang. Guys, I'm so sorry. It's You're moving back really quickly. It's, it's a little time, obscure. Yeah, we want to hear your EDH or commander stories. So yes. uh, you... what is your funniest commander experience? Yeah. It can be just a turn that something funny happened or a full game, but mm-hmm. give us give us the lowdown. Phrases phrases help. Yeah. Please tell us phrases too. We will sort of read over a couple of the the best ones I think on the next episode. Uh my favorite. There's a commander whose name I forget cuz it's just weird. Uh exile two things from a graveyard, you get the power and toughness of one and then any any effect from the other. Okay. So it gets really big and scary. Yeah. He, like, got rid of some monstrous creature, so he's really big, and consecrated things. So it was big, and it did a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And everyone's freaking out about it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so good. And in my hand, <laughs> I tap the flames. <laughs> and I say, man, that's real cool. I want you to have that. You can have a basic land, though. <laughs> and I path his commander. Oh, that's great. And he, like, fueled up his entire turn to get here. Yeah, He's yeah. He's doing all this crazy stuff. Boom, my commander's a monster now. Come at me, bro. 
Nah, but you can get a followers, baby. I think the funniest time I ever had playing Commander out of my three times playing Commander. I was gonna say was um <laughs> was I here for all of them? Yes. Great. Um was the last time on stream when I dominated oh, and you guys Jesus hated Christ. me for it. Jesus. But that was a fun stream and you should go watch it because it is actually really funny. <laughs> Not because of the decks, just because of the conversation that ensues. Yeah. Um, but also, I do want to mention, um, you may have noticed last mm. week we had a card spotlight video go up on Thoughtseize uh, oh, on Thursday, yeah. uh, the day after the usually the main podcast episode. I believe the plan is to do that again. So tomorrow, you should see a new card spotlight video. The article Ooh. for that card spotlight is already up on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably including the next one at this point when, when the video goes up. We'll wow. see. But um, yeah. So we're actually going to try and start sort of a mini-series on those. So if you have any card mm -hmm. suggestions, feel free to let us know. Yeah, please um, do. We love to, uh, to get some input from that. So definitely check that out. Check out our other videos. We've been releasing a lot of different content than normal lately which has been very fun for us something new something yeah new. um so i hope you guys enjoy it uh with that though i think we were going to wrap up today's episode yeah, i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for sticking around and watching it's my name good. is kevin my name's will and this has been it resolves <laughs>